JP Cerno and I am joined, of course, by our awesome round table. Steve Dez is in the house. Don Dino is also with us. And back again, Naomi. I thought oh. come please come back more often, girl. And also, of course, Jason Eccles. And maybe Michaela in like 10 minutes, maybe. Woo! Her, her, her being late is not related to our relation together. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> Now let, okay, going back on track. So this week's movie is literally from the same magic movie makers that brought us Star Wars, Pirates of the Caribbean, and the SpongeBob movie. Time about ILM's only animated picture, Rango. Uh, Alan, I'm gonna give my first uh, thoughts. First, go ahead. Um, it's a delightful animated film. Basically, if Zootopia was a Western and it was just it's so weird. This film is definitely out there, and I'm not gonna lie. Rewatching it again, I felt like there's a lot of things that you know, young JP missed because this is a very, it's a very, <laughs> it's so weird. Like there's things in this movie that I'm like, wow, this, this is too good for a movie to you know have been made by Nickelodeon. You know, like like a little too good. Like just the visuals, the script, the story. Everything is amazing about this movie, even the way that they made it. I we might talk into that later, but it's just like little tiny tidbits. But I'm gonna pass it on to you guys. What did you guys saw about the movie? I'm gonna pass it first to Dez or Jason. Let's go, with Jason first. All right, beat you out again, Dez. Uh, I actually love this movie. I when the Nickelodeon. Um, you know, uh, logo came up before the movie started. I was like, whoa, man, like, this is super dope. Uh, I might have to watch a Nickelodeon movie. Uh, but it, it didn't it didn't feel like anything Nickelodeon-esque, really. I mean, maybe in a way, but it was so dope. Like, the voice acting was dope. It was a different type of animation. Um, like, the, the aesthetic. It was just a really well-put-together movie. And, you know, uh, Johnny Depp was... Honestly, it's one of Johnny Depp's best performances, if we're being completely honest. That's what I think. Um, it's a, it's a great it's a great movie, man. It really is. Like I I don't know how this one slipped by me for so long. It's uh, I had nothing but good vibes from this thing from beginning to end. I loved all of it. Awesome, awesome. I'm gonna pass it on to uh, Des again. My bad. We're gonna pass it right back to you, Bill. What what do you think? <laughs> You know what? For that, I'm going to say I hate JP. I hate him. <laughs> he, he, trying to, he trying to say out here that black people look alike. Because he called me and then he said Jason. Oh. So I, uh, I think you, maybe JP. you internalized that one. I didn't think that at all. JP, is that what you were doing? I'm just going to ignore that one. Gonna, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, JP. Are you saying we all look alike? No, no, no. My, my, my swivel chair of ignorance is, is I'm looking at the Rango. I think because JP saw Johnny touch him? Depp play a Mexican uh, lizard, he thinks that now, you know, people can just assimilate like that. Oh, my God. Uh, but anywho, uh, my first thoughts of this movie was Dino probably loves this movie. That was my first initial thought you don't know uh, me uh, <laughs> well the reason why i say that is because one of my biggest critiques uh and i guess that's just me this is a good by the way this is a great movie if you got kids if you got kids this is a good thing to like put there so they can distract themselves and you and mama can get busy but um if <laughs> this movie to me there's two things I disliked personally. And those are just my own pet peeves or whatever. Uh, is This is my first time watching this movie. Uh, the first one is, what is the deal with Hollywood and freaking Westerns? They romanticize Westerns. They love it so much. They got to put it everywhere. I'm tired of Westerns. That's the reason Dino loves this movie, because he loves Westerns. Uh, like I said, you don't know me. The And the second thing is, I think this movie is a tad too long. 
I think if we would have shrunk it down just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit, if we were really like just smooth the edges, just like cut a little bit of those chasings that were prolonged, uh, then possibly I would have really enjoyed this movie. But because JP hyped it and Naomi also hyped it for me via text, <laughs> uh, I came into this movie with very large expectations. And I was like, yeah, Johnny Depp's performance is dope. But I had a lot of pet peeves. Like the whole, I love the inclusion of the Mexican culture, but I hated the fact that I don't think there was actually like Mexican representation like that in this, in this film. Um, so yeah, that's just me. Pass it along. That oh, for certain. Right. Now I'm going to pass the paddle on to uh, Dino. What do you think about the movie? Well, first off, my, my ear is burning. I feel like someone's <laughs> talking about me. Um, first time actually watching the movie, I was uh, when I was working at Fox uh, in the cafe, they would have TVs playing this. So I feel like for a couple months, Every so every few days, like cable, they play the same movie over and over. So I feel like visually, I had seen the 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 movie a bunch. Oh, and I'm wearing a Fox Pride shirt. There you go. Um, but I had never actually like heard it. I I enjoyed it. Um, it's funny you say Zootopia. I feel like it's it's like yeah, it's kind of like Zootopia if it were real. <laughs> <laughs> Like, if we were being a little more honest, I think it has aged really well, CGI-wise. Like, I I don't know how well it did when this came out, um, but it, I think it's because it's lizards and stuff. They're really kind of creepy, creepy, unlike Zootopia, where they're all, like, cute and giggly and stuff like that. So I don't know if that was maybe throwing people off. Uh, I also agree that it might be one of Johnny Depp's best performances. I, I actually looked when the movie came out and like where he was with all his Pirates of the Carib Caribbean because I was like, oh, I can still differentiate Johnny Depp characters and his acting from him just being uh, Sparrow, Jack Sparrow, you know, because later on I feel like, oh, now it's just Jack Sparrow acting in other movies. Uh <laughs> so yeah i enjoyed the film uh to steve hey man i don't think we have enough time to talk about why hollywood loves westerns like there's there's so much to unpack and where to begin but we can have that conversation and uh you know i picked my movie for next week when it comes up we'll kind of maybe talk about that as well but yeah i enjoyed the film again uh ed being it looks really good. The only parts I think is with a rattlesnake where it's like a certain movement of the camera where it kind of looks a little dated uh, graphic wise. But other than that, I thought it looks really good. It's like, yeah. So visually, I really liked that story. It was, you know, whatever. But um, it's, it's a fun movie for sure. And not just for kids, uh, you know, like for actual human beings. Uh, so there you go, Steve. But <laughs> the, I, yeah, uh, the human being part, <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> Lizard and mariachi hours. I think literally the only, uh, I know that's, uh, the, uh, production wise, it was, uh, there was a lot of, there was a heavy Latin, Latinx, uh, people working on it production wise, but talent wise, I'm sure the only one that was voiced by an actual Latin American was probably the frog that dies, the one frog that was killed by the hawk. So, e. Anyways, last but not least, Naomi, what do you feel about this movie? Um, this film is actually one in my top ten animated films. I this is a pro, um, pre-COVID film, so I did have the privilege to see this in the movie theater, and they won a you know Academy Award and whatnot. So I like the textures that are in this film. They're very detailed when they were making this animation. Everything's very detailed. I, I, I'm in love. I, the story, everything, Rango's character. And I like how every character has its own little, you know, background story to it, but you don't really know their whole story, but like their, like their whole identity is identified by how they 
wear their wardrobe and whatnot. So whoever like designed their wardrobe in the animation really did a good job in giving us an idea and who and what these characters are, especially that spoon dude and like all those dudes that were hanging out in the cantina and whatnot. So yeah, that's just my first intake on this. That is effing awesome. I agree 100% full heartedly. And I guess that will be a nice segue to, I guess one of my questions for discussion is that um, like the look of this film, like, like it, it's no accident that it holds up really well and still looks good. It's literally from the pioneers of, uh, of uh, special effects from ILM. This was their only animated movie that they made. And I'm shocked that's the only one because it is so freaking great i can only imagine if they decide to make more on uh, like kind of like a disney or a pixar route like oh you know what we're gonna make our own animated movie you know so i guess i want to talk about the look of the film what was your guys's take or your favorite uh look for the film like for me i think it's the same thing that naomi said like every character in this movie has a very like defined feature like you see rango's character He's not symmetrical. He has a wonky face. One eye is slightly bigger than the other one. His crooked neck. And every, uh, there's almost every citizen that I could tell, like, was wearing a prosthetic, like, no, not everyone, but, like, had a prosthetic on them. Like, you could tell, like, okay, they got history. Like, they went through a lot of shit, and the movie was not afraid to make them as ugly as possible. Exactly. But there was in that grit, in that dirtiness. Like, ah, oh, the movie did so good with the character designs visually. So that was my favorite visual were the characters, but what was your guys' favorite visuals in this movie? I'll go first. Uh, I gonna say uh, everything that had to do with Rango in particular and the the dudes that were like in prison that were mining that were like really ugly, the thieves looking guys because of the features. It's just like, it's so detailed. It's literally... They took what Pixar does and they say, we're going to do the fucking opposite, you know, and make our characters like with volume, with depth, with like very defined and like wrinkles and things like that. And I really enjoy that. And I think that might be the reason why this could be the only film they make because they realize how fucking tough it is. And they were like, you know what? This might not be worth it <laughs> or let's cash out. Uh, but yeah, that's my opinion. The characters, again, great. Yeah, again, visually, it's stunning. And I don't know why, I don't know if I was in a Johnny Depp hating mode there for a while, and maybe that's why I didn't watch it when it first came out. I don't know if I thought this was maybe pretentious uh, of a film, or because it looked maybe weird, but yeah, it just it had a lot of layers, which I really do appreciate in that sense. And yeah, it, it, it reminds me a lot of the, again, story-wise, it's just a, a mishmash of different Western tropes and stuff like that, even Bugs Life, if you will, um, but a little more gritty. I was actually thinking, I was like, oh, is this why they thought of of Johnny Depp for the Lone Ranger because he did this Western. And I just saw that the director of this also directed the Lone Ranger. <laughs> oh, no. As well as the first part. So I'm like, all right, well, that answers that question. But visually, it's great. Uh, I mean, and just how they used all the different animals in different, you know, uh, those are the road runners are the, are the horses. Just like how they... <laughs> who picked what animal did what type of thing, right? And like they're the cast system, if you will, of what animals had what jobs. And uh, I thought I thought that was fun at times. I guess that's me. I think so. Okay. <laughs> Um, I love the style of the movie. The movie was definitely stylized. Like everything was very intentional. Um, from like the, I mean, intentional in a lot of ways, really, from the storytelling to the, you know, the layers and textures of the animation to, you know, character development and all that stuff was so on point. Um, I really like the, uh, I really like the costume design too. 
And I also uh, liked right away with how he's wearing that um, that flower shirt. And I kept thinking like, man, that flower shirt looks really familiar. And then they flash at the cameo of um, yep. Hunter S. Thompson and they're both wearing the same shirt. And I was like, oh, he's sounding like Hunter S. Thompson. Maybe that's who this, maybe that's who the character really is. But then you, you know, he's an actor. So he's actually doing a lot of different characters and they're all pretty much Johnny Depp characters he's doing throughout the movie, I noticed. Um, you know, he's playing like four different guys. Uh, yeah, but it, it's so stylized and so detailed and it's so thoughtful in that regard. Um, you know, like you said, just making sure all the tropes are there so that the movie's very understandable, like who's who, just by looking at him, you know who's who. You know, you know the old prospector, you know the, you know, the, the, the mayor of the town, you, you just know him. Um, and, and, you know, follows all those Western tropes, you know, and kind of pokes fun of it. Then they got the Clint Eastwood character at the end. And, you know, all that stuff is super dope, man. Like, really, I can't speak high enough about every single part of this movie, to be honest with you. Like, I really genuinely loved it. Like, I don't know why they never made any more of these. This is crazy to me. Like, they should have been making one of these every few years. Like, it's incredible. It's up there with anything Pixar's ever done. But, you know, more, just a different kind of swing to it. I won't say it's like, you know, straight up all family. A lot of this stuff made me think it wasn't for family watching it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's it was a different swing to a piece of animation. And, you know, I'm glad, you know, I got a chance to see this thing. There was a lot of spiritual stuff that the armadillo was talking about. Mm. So I, this is basically like my millionth time seeing it. So it's. I, I was catching on to it. I'm like, wait, what? How come I didn't catch this on when I saw it in the movie theater? So it, it does definitely need a second take. Um, I like Johnny Depp's improvisation, like Rango's improv in when he like took over that little, like, what was it? Like, whole, like that whole town, that mole town? What was it called? I don't even know what it's called. Right. Anyways, I, I like the improv, like how he became like this prancy dude, like, da 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 da, you know, like, I don't know. I find that amazing in whoever thought of that as they were writing the story. So that's just my two cents there. The thespian troop scene. That was. Yeah, that was fantastic. <laughs> that was... <laughs> I was like, this movie's pulling out all the stops. Like, if they're doing a full circle, it's it was really, really wonderful to see that. Yeah. And like, oh my gosh. Like, I, 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 like it's. Like that, that's like, that was something that like this time around I caught it was like, he's literally a chameleon, you know, and he not only is he a chameleon, but he's an actor. Like, like, you know, that you find out in the beginning of the movie, like, oh, he's just an actor trying to find his stuff. But this whole movie is about, you know, him trying to find like who he is. Like the, like you, the, the hero cannot leave their story. They have to find out who they are in the story. But like, He's kind of bad at it in the beginning, and he's also a chameleon. And we even have that one scene where you find out, oh, he's not all that good at being a chameleon either. He can't blend in to save his own life, you know. But somehow, you know, he uh, finds his way in this in this new nice old little western. Uh, this is a good movie for underdogs. I mean, yeah, like if. He's also part of that Murphy's Law, like er everything goes wrong or everything he touches breaks. That's how I see Rango, yeah. like his life. <laughs> I think someone has a question there. Steve, you got a question, buddy? Oh, okay. Uh, I was waiting for JP to give me the okay. He's oh. the okay. <laughs> it, it just got real quiet and I was like... Uh, no, I, I, I want to talk uh, before because it seems like we're going to be jumping. I want to talk about the opening sequence because to me that's that was the thing that really hooked me in into the film when he was like setting the stage of like how the hero uh is like to me honestly that first piece for someone that's kind of like writing a movie that's amazing like that whole first sequence uh because you can from there you can extrapolate so many things that you can make with a film because it, it really comes to simple things and then you attach story to it but literally he's giving like the framework of the hero's journey 
Uh, and this is a classical film that you can apply it to either Star Wars or Finding Nemo or et cetera, et cetera. Like yeah. the same framework. And to me, that was the thing that really set me up. And the fact that it started like, sort of like what I guess like Toy Story 3 or something was that like they he escapes the whole family thing but we never really saw the actual thing with the family it was more about the journey yeah. uh, to me that opening sequence amazing beautiful great yeah and like it, it almost sounds literally like a movie pitch within the movie and it breaks the fourth wall right at the end of that of that scene and there was a thing that i noticed i can't believe i didn't notice it before but i saw the movie twice before uh before uh starting this discussion but on the second time around michaela caught it the first time i wish she was here to talk about it but like it's set up in the beginning in that first scene is the frame you know he's setting up his stage at first i thought I was like oh he's stuck in a box but you see that frame used multiple times yeah. when he find, when he when he makes up his own character of Rango, he sees himself in a frame. And then when he uh, meets with the spirit of the West, he tells him like, "That story's on you, buddy. This is your story. It's like you gotta and, deal and, with it." And also, also just to add this on, so people chime in, uh, this movie confronts something that even since I was a kid, I've been like struggling with, and that's identity. Because constantly throughout the movie, he was like, who am I? Like, like deep down inside, he was like pondering and questioning that. And uh, it's really awesome. Like the values and the things that this movie has. He's an artist. That's who he is. And an artist is someone who can do multiple things and is always self-growing. So a chameleon is always changing and developing its skin. So it, this is a mystery to me, like how they, why didn't they make a second movie out of Rango? <laughs> like, <laughs> I wish I, th I, I think they I didn't make probably the money right away. It seems like that's a weird thing, right in Hollywood, like, oh, how much is your opening weekend? And then what is your domestic gross? And then what is worldwide? And I think that's, you know, it didn't, I mean, it didn't do great in what Hollywood sees as, as good numbers, if that makes sense. Um, I did catch the, the going to the box thing and talking about the spirit of the West. Can we point out how great Timothy Oliphant is for a second? Because I know that he was doing Clint Eastwood, but he's amazing. We need more Timothy Oliphant is what I'm saying um because yeah he's in deadwood he's in uh justified he's even in once upon a time in hollywood so big fan of timothy oliphant yeah and that one scene like he like with with him as the spirit of the west like it's big, like yeah sure it is Red is giant death scene also but like it's like he's the main guy in that scene and he kind of out Eastwood, Eastwood in a way, because even yeah. as as the character as the man with no name, I don't recognize, I don't recall any scene from there where he actually had a long enough discussion or anything prolific at all. So I was like, damn, like this guy, holy shit, that he is the spirit of the West, you know? For a, for a split second, I was even like, wait, did they get Clint Eastwood for this bit? And then I was like, no, I'm pretty sure it's Timothy Oliphant. Uh, but it, it made me that's the greatness of it right i'm like man they probably got a yeah Tim, uh clint eastwood but no um uh, yeah i did too then, go on no i did too that's all i thought oh, it was yeah, really yeah, yeah. uh clint eastwood I, and i had so many i'm glad jason you also brought up the um like uh, hunter s thompson at the beginning, you know, which Johnny Depp also uh, played that role. So there were, and then you have, of course, Clint Eastwood's character. There are a lot of small gems throughout the the movie as well of just like, if you're into this, you probably know this. And yeah, callbacks to other Westerns and yeah, different, 
different movies and different actors. And did a lizard fly on the on the window in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? I thought it was bats, maybe, but he kept they kept talking about lizards, I feel like, throughout, right? There was bats that were flying and they were trying to uh, whack at them. And then I think in the casino, maybe there were lizards everywhere. So uh, yeah, I know that I know that was a recurring thing in the um, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas or whatever that movie. Fear and Loathing, is that what it's called? Yeah, that's the one. So I, I, I don't think it was an actual lizard that hit the car, but they would... They were saying bats were chasing them in that in the car convertible scene, but what a great way to also start a film, a, a movie. Like a, he has his little moment, you know, in in the in the car, and when that breaks and he flies, it's like you hit Hunter S. Thompson, and I think that lays a scene right there for you to know like what's coming, right? Like we just res- we referenced Hunter S. Thompson drug tripping in a Nickelodeon film in the first like three minutes so this is what you can expect um yeah anyway yeah it's definitely a trip um I guess uh for the next part of the discussion um like uh like this film like is very heavily like on the ensemble uh part um like I'm not surprised at all that uh, it was made literally by the same dude that made uh, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean because I did get some Caribbean vibes off of this film, especially with the scenes of like the action scenes. But like uh, he, he did bring a lot of like uh, actors from his other films into this one. So I kind of want to discuss like like who in the ensemble was like a uh, standout to you guys, like anybody in like the town folk or like I know uh, Johnny Depp, of course, as Rango Isla Fisher as the the one uh, beans the one who keeps the 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 lizard who keeps on freezing beans, beans. and they got Bill Nye as the rattlesnake Jake who I thought had the best character design like a fucking rattlesnake with like fucking pi- uh, pistol barrels for rattle for rattlers that was fucking great and like he, ooh, just evil incarnate like just the way that he he uh, performed that that snake was just so fucking great but uh, did you was there any standout performances? for you guys in this movie? Um, right off the bat, you know, Johnny Depp was, you know, really great and very Johnny Depp, you know, it just, actually all the, all the voiceovers were really, really good across the board. Even like the people I don't know, if, you know, if they were famous or not, like, you know, the, the little prospector dude I thought was great and, um, you know, little mouse, uh, like they, I thought so many of them were so fantastic. Like, so I have to give it up to everybody, and even the girl. Um, who is who played the girl? Oh, that was uh, Abigail Brez, uh, Breslin. No, well, and she played the, at that voice. She played the love Being interest. Kind of no, that's is uh, oh, Fisher. That's Isla Fisher. My dad. Oh, is a Fisher. Yeah, yeah. She was fantastic too, man. She sounded like you know what? I did pick up on some Australian accent a couple times actually. Like, huh, that's a weird way of saying that. <laughs> uh, is and she then, Australian? Yeah, she's Australian. Yeah. So that, that kind of makes sense. Because I was like, oh, wait, are we in Australia right now? <laughs> are we in the West? Where are we? You know, so that, that happened, I think, a couple times with her. But um, yeah, I mean, all the acting, though, was really, really good. And it was like animated, almost like they read it first or something. You know what I mean? Like, well, I think or- I'm going to bring, I'm going to like cut in a well, little bit. So, so that's, let me, let me say something about that. So that's what made me feel like almost the good, bad, and the ugly. Because I was like, here, they're trying to portray that these creatures that have like a human-like society are from here and from there, but their voices are not matching with like what they're supposed to be. So that that's really what confused me. Because I was just like, they're trying to like, the owls, and Rango were supposed to be like Mexican, and then like so I, that would confuse me. That was the thing that really. Confused me. Yeah, it didn't help that like a lot of the people were from other places. But to go on, what Jason just said, like this is a little fun tidbit about this movie. Like not only was the ILM was the ones who animated, but even the way that this film was made, 
uh, pre-production was unconventional. There's technically two versions to this movie. There's the one that we saw and how they re- did the recordings. The way that the guy did the recordings was they literally did not have actors in vo- uh, voice booths or anything like that. In recording booths, they did not have that. They actually shot the movie in like a sound stage. They, you know how uh, it's like they try to mimic motion capture, but without the motion capture. So like they literally shot the actors and recorded them with conventional cameras and with long boom mics to get as crisp as an audio as they could. And then they send that to the animation team as a reference. They literally had them perform the scenes out as if you would do with a, with a normal movie and they recorded it with audio, just like a normal movie. And they just sent it to the animation team for them to do what they wanted. <laughs> so that's actually an old school technique because uh, Walt Disney used to do that back in the day. Exactly, exactly. There was an echo every time they spoke, like, like, echo, like I'm not an echo, but just like, I know that they didn't do it where, where it was secluded sound, you know, like I heard an echo. Like, I think I know what, yeah, it makes sense. Okay, okay, I didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah, that would make a lot of sense, man, because their performances seemed really tight and like the, the improv that was animated with it. I'm like, wow, that's a really, you know, just beats and timing and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, that's just really on point the way you did that. Like, there's emotion in it and there's like context just so the, the, the characters acting in the piece. Yeah, and they're animated. So, and I'm like, so huh. they, they threw uh, Johnny Depp on a windshield because that, that explains a lot. Probably a Velcro wall. Oh, <laughs> it's, I wouldn't be surprised that I did see a, a, a behind the scene bit where they did have a, in the climax where he and uh, Beans are locked in that water vault and they're about to drown and he's banging on, on, on the door. He's literally banging on a piece of plexiglass <laughs> during the recording. So like, I wouldn't be surprised that they did that. They even had them dress up in the uh, actor clothing during the acting troupe scene. And a lot of the actors did wear a single piece of clothing that resembled their character. Like the, the Confederate chicken with the air on his, when his eye, the guy literally did wear a Confederate hat, you know? And like, I think the banker did wear like the glasses for the banker and whatever. It's yeah, just- Some of this is dark. That one chicken has an arrow through his head. Yeah, like right? his eyeball. <laughs> Like you can't show that to a kid. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, everything was was definitely on the darker side for sure. Uh, oh, going back to just performance, can't go wrong with Stephen Root. There were some lines also dropped of like there are very few deaths that we see on on camera. One of them is the banker, I think, or the mayor. You know, and then they're like <laughs> they talk about eating him up and stuff like that uh and then Stephen Root uh, as a doctor he had some lines where I was like "Whoo, that's pretty Uh, dark or that's like not necessarily necrophilia but there were some definitely some lines where I was like oh boy this one had human he said I had a human sternum in my bowels or something like that I I found a human spinal cord in my finkel matter (laughs) (laughs) They're like, yeah, maybe you should get that checked. Oh, man. Talk about prostates for like a good minute. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I I mean, I can see why they haven't done another one, but they should, right? (laughs) Like, it's just like, let's. It's like, it seemed like a bunch of adults and like, oh, we have the keys to our dad's car. Let's go have fun. And I feel like that's what whoever greenlit this movie and whoever got like the 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 power for it just took over. And I don't know if also the fact that they were filming them acting it out, I'm sure that costs way more money than them just going into a booth and uh, and 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 saying the the words and all that. So I'm guessing in a practical sense, that's you know that's going to be more expensive. Thinks that this that this movie that sounds like this movie didn't make a lot of money because like you're right practically fucking horrible idea that that's money down the fucking budget well like like what 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 what, what was the year that this movie came out 2011. 2011. 
Yeah. Yeah. So by this time, I, I, I was actually working at a movie theater when this movie came out. And me working at a movie theater that I could go watch movies for free. I wasn't interested in watching this movie because this movie had like really poor marketing too. Like a big thing about Hollywood is the whole marketing machine. And I think this movie, the only thing that I saw was a poster or something like that. And I was just like, okay, Johnny Depp is a lizard. Like, why do I care? <laughs> so that, if IMDb, how, however you want to take I, IMDb, budget estimated 135 million. Opening weekend, domestic, 38 million. And then domestic gross, 123 million so they lost money well i mean and then worldwide we got different you know, numbers here that i'm looking at million. what are you looking at where are you looking at i'm looking on uh google on the box okay. office and it yeah says, i said imdb so it might be different but yeah yeah this says that the budget was 135 and the yeah. domestic gross was 245 harry yeah. dean standing is here Worldwide gross it says two forty five uh, on IMDb, but yeah. Oh, okay. Either way, if if we're going for what Hollywood likes opening weekend to be and stuff like that, right? Way below. What, what was opening weekend? Thirty nine, you said. Thirty eight. And I feel like it has to make its money, uh, whatever it costs, twice as much to make it, like to even be considered. Like, oh, that was a that was a good financial risk, but that. Yeah. There's gonna come. There's gonna. There's gonna come a time you can literally make a movie like this on your iPad. I would. I not. made one yesterday. Well, well, on the pooper, I made a movie on my iPad. It was great. Coming out 2021. <laughs> Need to get that checked. <laughs> uh oh! I I don't want to take over JP. I do want to say, can we talk oh, about that. like favorite kind of scene? One of my favorite moments. I mean, there's so many, but Johnny Depp, uh, let's say Rango, right? Johnny Depp is a little bit, you know, not not great at human being uh, at times. But Rango talking about how little water there is and he's trying to calm everyone down is like, all right, if we, you know, if everyone wants a drink of this water and, you know, and I come in and, <laughs> and then you are over here and you say, I want to drink. Like, that killed me. Just the fact that he's like doing this what ifs. And like, he's just, he's like, so, he hasn't drank anything all day yet. Every single time he's about to drink, something, you know, gets taken out. And he's just like drinking like five chugs of water and then like splashes his face around. Uh, you know what's great about that scene too though it's very funny it's very like almost vaudevillian you know in in humor and scope but what really makes it great is that it also explains really early on what type of person Rango is Rango is always going to find the solution yeah you know it's going to be unconventional he's going to use his skill set but he's going to find the solution he, he improvises his way out so he's yeah. always like on the dime, like this is what I'm gonna do now. He'll just yes and everything. Yeah. Uh, that's a, so that seems so great too, because you realize like that's literally the first time that you had any sort of drink of water since the since the car accident. You know, it's like he literally did not 45 have, minutes into the movie. <laughs> right, he had no drink at all. So as soon as he sees it, he's like, oh shit, that's water. Um, and think, even the, and th I mean, and, and think about it like he can eat all day because he eats bugs. Like the water was really the, and I think like you can go without food for like a longer period of time, but yeah. with, with water you go for less. So literally, I think the owls were foreshadowing. Oh, he's gonna die because he wouldn't have the water. So in a way, it was smart that he did all that. Um, it's also a tropical animal. I. You, they're supposed to be in within a 70 degree moisture yeah. environment uh, so can he, you imagine he's the I, only character who is not a desert animal <laughs> i i'd like also like you said of of uh, eating or whatever i think it was at the end when he's riding again 
and it's like slow mo, and there's a I think it's a dragonfly, like, and you're no, like, no, no, oh, that, it's... That, was, that was actually on the final showdown, I think it was. Oh, was it the yeah. final showdown? Yeah. It's like slow mo, <laughs> and the firefly goes by, and like, it's yeah, it's so great. It's so um, cool. um, I had some really good. Fun. They had fun. That's what this movie seen like people just having fun. Yeah, like. Oh my god! Like, like my favorite scene, I, I'll admit, in the movie is actually the one that I have kind of like a little bit the most critique about, and it is literally the the ride of the Valkyrie scene, like when they're fighting off the moles. Because that scene is, I'll admit, it's too long. It's too long of a chase sequence, but there's so much crazy shit happening. <laughs> you got you got moles with machine guns, and you got like. Like it's so funny how they, how they implement one of the characters with the town people is an owl, and you and I had to, in the second watch I caught it where one of the moles is trying to punch this guy in the face, but because he's an owl, he turns his head 180 to avoid being punched in the in the face. It was like it's just those small little details that was just so great, and there's so many in that one scene, but it is it's too long. <laughs> It was too long of a chase sequence. Yeah, you can you can notice also some of the humor that definitely was in Pirates of the Caribbean in the first one, oh, like yeah. of just like the incompetence of some <laughs> of the you know like when all of a sudden the you know spoiler the you know the wagon tips over and it's an empty bottle and it's just you know the the main bad guy and and his lackeys are talking about like you know how, why didn't you say anything <laughs> like we've been chasing an empty you know uh yeah. clearly all that definitely rang a bell from like the first pirates of the caribbean yeah. before that, it just went off because it's it has such a scene that you could see the two idiot pirates from the first one like that could yeah. be two idiot pirates and a barbosa scene it's like we did all this for nothing <laughs> Yeah, I did see Barbosa so off of that mole dad. The Barbosa ah! dad, I did see. Hi, Michaela. You know, the, uh, the mole man, I, I feel like he yeah. had that Barbosa look and talk and everything. Um, I think my favorite scene would be where he just like hand writes, yeah, you could dig into the bank and like find one, you know, like that's such a fucking funny ass scene. He's just like, here. <laughs> A prospecting <laughs> thing, yeah. Permit, yeah. Oh, man. So funny that he's. Do you gone. notice how many times the permit came back though? They did yes. like three. There was a callback for sure. They yeah, kept yeah, yeah, yeah. referring to that permit. <laughs> and he's like, "Ah, oh, we don't need to talk about that." And then yeah. he like takes it back or whatever. Yeah, no, it's it's very okay. smart. It's very much you know not a kid movie. If you think about it. <laughs> At all. <laughs> oh, what? No, it's funny. Um, Dino's just razzing oh. that. That's oh. true. <laughs> Did I do? Nothing, nothing. It's chill. Um, I, I'm just out of the loop. I just got here. Sorry. We were talking about uh, uh, favorite scenes. Mm. Yeah, so. How do you really feel about Johnny Depp? We've all been given our thoughts about him as a only person. you have given your thoughts about how they feel about Johnny Depp. You're the only one. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. <laughs> I think that it's it's it takes two to tango. I don't think either are completely innocent, but I also think there's a <laughs> what I like how he just slid down. <laughs> Now you're gonna have to get back up, and I'm not gonna help you. Oh. <laughs> Can I? Um, I don't. I just saw the the beans right there. I was a little worried there for a second. Was anyone else after the whole uh, Me Too? You know, hashtag Me Too, where she's like frozen, which is a defense mechanism, and then he goes in for the kiss, and I was like, whoa, are not cool. And then all of a sudden, like she comes, you know, she comes back to life, and she was just playing. I don't think Me Too would have gotten me to like think that that was a wrong move. I just was like, that's not cool. There was romance there from the beginning, but but, but still, (laughs) the second part was there was at least some history. I'll admit, I was more eh the first time. 
when he decides to put, you know, put his arm on her yeah. shoulder and is like, are you coddling me? He's like, no, no, what are you talking about? Yeah, that, <laughs> that was the one I was like, oh, no. <laughs> but yeah, that wouldn't slide today. <laughs> and a few of the uh, ethnic jokes. Those probably wouldn't slide either. But well, that, the the Native it, American crow, I think, yeah. or was was he a bird? His, his ingenuity was. The, yeah, oh, there was a straight I, up Indian thing yeah. reference in there, and I didn't like it. Did the, I totally miss? I, I I noticed a Native American uh, bird, but did they actually say ingenuity? And I totally missed that. Uh, it was like a joke, and like it was supposed to be like off color to show him how how out of water this fish was because like right pretty yeah. awkward about it but it but that was just rango's character also like he yeah. does word play a lot mm -hmm. in the that they give him a lot of yeah rambling the, word play like hmm. you know he's trying to <laughs> like, act as a westerner or whatever it's right. like it's like no one talks like that here bro you need to slow down <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Like, no one talks like that out here in the wild, wild west, bro. Relax. But he found a character and stuck it to it. Yeah. Okay, so. What, what else have we not touched on? Was there anything? I know you, you kind of laid in the game, but did you want to touch on or ask anything about the movie? Well, I mean, I honestly think that this is such an underrated film just because. Like you can, like you can tell, like he. This was supposed to be like his version of Blazing Saddles. Like I wonder if like he ever thought of it as like an actual live adaptation film. And do you think that would work? Well, I mean, like we literally discussed earlier. Like I don't know if you know this, but like the way that they made the film, like they literally shot the movie, uh, at, like if it was a movie and like a sound stage. With the actors as if you would do motion capture ex except x motion capture so they performed it as if that makes a sense. traditional movie so there was a, like even in the film like you don't get a lot in normal anime movies where there's acting and reacting you know mm -hmm. like not just using the best lines like you could tell that they were there right. but like yeah i'm sure they took it as seriously as if they were making a movie and if they were given the choice, they probably would, you know? But, but animation was the medium that they wanted to go with, you know? Yeah. I don't think I would do, like, this particular film, I don't think I would, I would do as well if it was live action. Like, I feel Three Amigos and Blazing Saddles uh, are, those times are kind of past, right? Right. Mm -hmm. The, the ones that they've tried to kind of make more funny, what is it, A Thousand and One Ways to Die in the West? Is that one? And then... Yeah, the Sick McFarlane movie. Yeah. Yeah, I never saw... And then there's the Ridiculous Eight or whatever that shit show was of, that Adam Sandler did, I think, was another one that, that had... Dolly. Anyway, so... What? Oh, the ballad. That, that, was, that was a parody of uh, The Hateful Eight. Right, exactly, but... It, it had a bunch of issues with Native American people and stuff like that that were assigned to it. So yeah. I I think it would be really hard to try and do like a tongue-in-cheek comedy uh, oh, Western it, spoof these days. It's yeah. weird because like, I don't even like as, 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 as this is this film is a comedy. It's an animated comedy but I actually see it more as a fantasy if anything, like there's so many fantastical elements of like, like where you are in your journey and they have a lot of cool visuals where I feel like it's more fair to see it as that as opposed to a comedy because all those other examples, they're just straight up comedies. Mm -hmm. They're straight up comedies. They want to go for the easy poo poo joke. But this one, I feel like it was a lot more than that. And they probably got away with it because, you know, there's a bunch of animals, but I'm sure if you just turn them into people and like, like, just get rid of the slightly stereotypical, like racist stuff, like just remove that. Like, sure, there's plenty of it. But I feel like there's enough where if you take that out and just leave the soul of the story in, it would definitely still work, you know? Mm. Not like 
the 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 stupid six or whatever the fuck that movie was. Right. Whereas like that's that's the joke is that it's. it's I kind of, it's like, I, I kind of do, but I don't. I was like, I kind of want to go and watch The Lone Ranger now just to see what the director uh, Me too. was thinking. But I, I was also, thinking the same thing. But I also don't. So should I pick that for next week, Jason? Should I pick The Lone Ranger? Don't do that. <laughs> no. Just that's, uh, that's on Dino's time. If you want to pick a lesser, put pick the Buster Shrugs one. That one's so much better. Mm-hmm. Western Shrugs was really good. Yeah. They, get, they did a good job. But if, you're gonna pick, if you're going to pick a Western pick, Robin Hood, Men in Tights. And uh, I don't think you know what good. a Western <laughs> is. They, they do reference uh, Plays and Saddles in that. Mm-hmm. Black Sheriff! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, anywho. All right. Well, I need to I need to start get going to go have some dinner, but it seems that the conversation has a uh, unless I mean you get you know? unless you guys can uh, you guys want to keep talking about uh, Rango Rango. No, I feel like uh, what we said was pretty much what needed to be said. And does anyone have any additional thoughts before we uh, wrap it up? I don't have any additional thoughts, um, but uh, I can jump into final thoughts. Go on ahead, unless anyone objects. Uh, do you Do you have any more thoughts, PJ? No, I was like, it's a democracy. Whoever wants to <laughs> speak, speak now or forever hold your peace. Um, so I think uh, this is a movie that I would highly recommend to adults and people who like, you know, outsider movies even and. Like, it's kind of an art flick in a lot of ways, too. Um, if you like Westerns, then I can recommend it. Uh, but I can't recommend it for any kids because there's a lot of stuff in it that didn't feel very comfortable to me to be introducing to a children's world. You know what I mean? And if it is for kids, then what age? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I feel like even, like, a lot of young adults, like, between, like, 18 and 25 are going to miss most of it. You know what I mean? Most of it. So I think uh, you got to be a little bit more of a thinker and maybe a, a bit abreast of uh, Western genre to really, really appreciate this movie. But it's Not funny. Dino. <laughs> Not Dino. Uh, but it's funny. And uh, for that, I recommend it. You know, I, I really love this movie. I thought it was fantastic. I could watch it again one day. Like, I, it's, 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 it's up there. If anyone mentions like top animated movies of all time, like there in some lists, I think Rango makes, makes it top hundred or something. Totally agree. Final thoughts on me. Um, I recommend this film to everyone. It's just in my top 10 animated films and the textures are beautiful. Everything's well put together. The music is outstanding. It was very well planned out. If you're in love with Westerns, as everyone has mentioned here, um, it's it's totally a, a must-see. But it, a must-see like more than once, you know, because then you won't catch everything that is said unless you have your captions on. <laughs> but that was just it. <laughs> All righty, I'll, I'll go, I'll go. Uh, final thought. Uh, movie's decent. Decent. Don't let nobody hype you on the movie because if not, then you're going to feel like the movie's meh. And uh, that's what happened to me. So thanks, Naomi and JP. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, the movie is good. Good performances. Good stuff. I will still watch it with a kid. I don't care what Jason and Dino says. I would. What? Like, if I have bro, bro, if I have my kid at three years old, I will show him this movie. I'll be like, watch. I know you don't understand nothing, but look at the characters in there. So people, I would recommend this movie definitely for people that want to write a movie. It's a great base to study to write a movie. Uh, definitely people that are into animation and graphic design and visual stuff. It's a great movie for that as well. Um and overall, if you're one of those people that you just love having a movie and the movie feel like a roller coaster, you want to go for a ride for a while, 
this is a great movie for that. Me personally, I would have loved it. This movie was like 30 minutes or 40 minutes less than what it was. It was a little too long for me, but uh, it was a good movie. I will revisit it maybe in five years. What about you, Dino? Any final thoughts? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would show my kid when he's three years old, but when he's like between uh, seven to 10, I probably wouldn't show it to him because he might at that point be a little too thought provoking uh i will (laughs) right i feel like there are age gaps where you're like yeah show them whatever they're look at the colors look at this they're not gonna get stuff um i thought it was great there are a lot of nods i feel like the rattlesnake jake was was a little bit like lee van cleef if you guys have been following us lee van cleef was angel eyes in uh, the good the bad and the ugly and the snake even had kind of a little mustache thing and even his eyes i don't know uh if i'm the only one who noticed that they were the eye of sauron okay i I felt some dragon vibes that's that's why he says he's from hell like where do you think i come from right it looked like sauron's eyes um anyway so yeah i would recommend this movie as well uh it's definitely one that also it's one of those that it's in the background would definitely leave it on you know for for a good bit anyway um it's it's one of those looking at looking back at it it is one of those like what a wasted opportunity of having this you know you have all your pixar movies you have some like dreamworks but then you could have had this whole other branch of you know ilm kind of uh cgi cartoonish movies that you know were kick ass but maybe maybe that's just me um don't believe anything steve says uh other than you know he can rock the mustache but other than that never believe what steve is saying or and and buy tesla stocks those are the only two things that you should listen for steve's advice mustaches and tesla stock anything else pay no attention to him and uh you and you entire trials um this is one of my favorite animated films of all time just because every single like i've watched this film a lot just because it's like so smart and i feel like every single time i watch it i find a new detail that just adds even more to like the meaning like this time around like i noticed when he was talking about the great spirit during the campfire scene like he actually like he actually draws like a whole bunch of like epic film like stuff like there's like tie fighters uh there's a reference to jurassic park and like a couple of like really random things in there that if you think about it it like makes sense and it just like there's so many layers to this film that like reaches like generations this is really like a love letter to like hollywood and finding yourself which is like something every year is goes through and i i think this is this is just a it's, a, it's a really good movie. I really like it. Gotcha. And for me, uh, I saw this movie first as an animation fan. Now that because of what we're doing here, I could appreciate it now as also a Western uh, fan. So you like animation, I recommend it. If you like Westerns, recommend it. If you like the poopy prostate jokes, uh, sure, why not? <laughs> But like overall, like it's such a, a surprising film where you just catch yourself things like, wow, this is, there's a lot going on for this, what most would assume is a kitty flick. So, but yeah, like it's, it's visually, it's gorgeous. Uh, writing wise, it's great and hilarious. Just overall for me, like for what, what JP likes in films, uh, like almost straight up a 10 out of 10. So with that being said, we're going to pass it on to Des. Des, what's up? Yo, uh, so for next week is actually Dino's turn. So Dino, uh, what? Hey, Steve, is- what's next week's movie? <laughs> Uh, it's 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 Dino's turn. So Dino can tell us because I I don't even know what's next week. So Dino, 
next week, guys, we're going to watch The Hidden Fortress. Hee-haw! It's, Woo! uh... Speaking of TIE Fighters and ILM and all that, it basically is the reason why anything exists. The Hidden Fortress, Toshiro Mifune, uh, directed and written by Akira Kurosawa. One, you know, we've been watching all these movies that are, you know, have all these ties to different things and you have Star Wars and all these other movies that are connected to this one movie, The Hidden Fortress. Star Wars, George Lucas would be nothing if it weren't for this film. The Hidden Fortress is what we're going to watch next week. Well, Ooh, dang, that's I... kind of weird to say that that man would be nothing without The Hidden Fortress. Like, he's still... He said it here first. Life. He might have yeah, had a very good nothing. life without George Lucas, the Hidden Fortress. That, <laughs> if no Hidden Fortress, there would be no Rango. There'd be no George Lucas. He, you know, George Lucas would be working at a farm right now if it weren't for Hidden Fortress. <laughs> From Skywalker, He'd be picking, the- yeah. <laughs> maybe, be- maybe if he would have been working on a farm, he would have learned to tell an original story while he was stacking bells of hay. Damn, and that's been. I'm just recorded. kidding. I'm not a film yeah. stop like that. I'm, I'm totally <laughs> kidding. I love Star Wars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What? Oh man, the truth has come out. Oh wow. That's the most fun I've had, guys. You know, it's a new beginning. We have a new president, new things are happening. It's gonna be amazing. The hidden fortune. Yeah, things uh I haven't thought about Trump in hours. I know, right? All righty, before we get into this, uh for, <laughs> Na- for Naomi, Michaela, Jason, JP, Dino, and Steve. See you next week. No. Hi, I'm JP Serno and welcome. Uh, thank- Hi, I'm JP Serno and thank you for watching Oye Demo Hi, I'm JP Serno and thank you for watching Oye Demo No Demo No Fucking Shit. Okay. <laughs> hey, I'm JP Serno and thank you for watching Oye Demo No. Right? Jesus Christ. Not even Christ. a flow. And I just. Okay. Hey, I'm JP Serno and thank you for watching Oye Demo No Demo No Fucking Shit. Okay. Hey, I'm JP Serno and thank you for watching Oye Demo No Demo No Fucking Shit. Okay. Hey, I'm JP Serno and thank you for watching Oye Demo No Demo No Fucking Shit. Okay. Hey, I'm JP Serno and thank you for watching Oye Demo No Demo No Fucking Shit. Okay. Hey, I'm JP Serno and thank you for watching Oye Demo No Demo No Fucking Shit. Okay. Hey, I'm JP Serno and thank you for watching Oye Demo No Demo No Fucking Shit. Okay. Hey, I'm JP Serno and thank you for watching Oye Demo No Demo No Fucking Shit. Okay. Of every time I fuck it up. Hey, I'm JP Cerno, and thank you for watching Oye Dimelo Network. Hey, I'm JP Cerno, and thank you for watching Oye Dimelo Network. And uh, click here for additional videos. And don't forget to subscribe. The lonely singles in your neighborhood already did.